Today I'm going to show you how to make some cake toppers to decorate your very own Harry Potter cake. Anita here and welcome to Anita's Cake Bakery. Today I'm going to show you how to make some cake toppers to decorate your very own Harry Potter cake. I'll show you how to make the golden snitch, the sorting hat, the glasses and the Harry Potter scarf. Okay, let's get started. To make the sorting hat, we need white modeling paste, a rolling pin, a Dresden tool, dark brown food coloring and a sharp knife. Once you've colored your modeling paste dark brown, roll it into a ball and then shape it into a cone. Flatten the wider end of your cone onto your surface. Then slightly bend and flick the pointed end of your cone. Now using your Dresden tool, mark the features onto the sorting hat.
need to roll a small piece of your brown into a rough circle shape as this is going to be the rim of the sorting hat. And then use your fingers to go around the rim just so that it has a little bit more of an uneven shape to it. And now you can go ahead and stick the cone part of the hat on to the rim with some edible glue or water. So now I'm using some edible tints. I've got um, two shades of brown and black. And I'm using the dusts just to add some definition and shading to the sorting hat. I've started off by using the black dusts. All the bits that I've um, pushed in with the Dresden tool, all the holes and all the crevices are going to be filled with the black dust. with the two shades of brown. Now we're on to the golden snitch where we'll need edible wafer paper, a rolling pin, a small cookie cutter, um, a round polystyrene ball, some modelling paste, some tools and a sharp knife. So I'm starting off by rolling the modelling paste and I'm going to wrap the modelling paste around the polystyrene ball. So I've applied some edible glue to the polystyrene ball so that the modelling paste can stick to it easily. Wrap the modelling paste around the ball, gathering it up at one end. So at this 
this point you may find that it feels a little bit lumpy and bumpy so I'm using my hands just to smooth around the ball just keeping that gathered piece at one end and once it's smooth enough I've cut the excess piece off and then continue to use your fingers to smooth it out. Once the ball is smooth enough, I'm using my tool just to mark the design of the golden snitch all over the ball. Just use your tool really lightly to push in to the paste. quite helpful was to dip the tool in some water so that it glides easier over the modeling paste without ripping it. I found that it was easier just to take my time slowly trying to get the pattern as perfect as I could. You may find it easier just to hold the ball while you're marking the pattern or what I've done is I've placed a small piece of paper towel over a cookie cutter and I'm actually resting the golden snitch on it while I'm marking the design out. Once I'd finished marking the design, I've left it to dry on the paper towel for around half an hour or so.
so now I'm going to make some gold paint and to do this I've used some gold luster dust and I've mixed it with some vodka you can also mix it with some lemon juice so again I'm keeping the golden snitch on my um, cookie cutter and paper towel while I paint when that side was dried I turned it over and painted the other so for the wings I've made a template using grease proof paper then I placed the template over the wafer paper and I cut two of these then using the scissors I cut some lines on one side of the wings so that it resembles feathers Next you need to stick a toothpick on one end of the wings. I've used some royal icing for this. to dry completely um, probably for around 10 minutes or so 10-15 minutes then using your royal icing place two dots on the top of the ball and then you can push the toothpick wings into the golden ball. And then to finish off I used some golden spray for a bit of sparkle. Now we need some sugar paste, a knife and an icing smoother. So to make the glasses I'm rolling my sugar paste into long sausage strips. the smoother because it helps me to roll nice even strips to shape the glasses wrap the strip around a cookie cutter and cut off any excess some edible glue to glue the ends together make two of these and then set them aside to dry completely
Next I've made the bridge of the glasses and I've stuck them where the two seams meet so that it hides that part. onto the glasses now because that's going to be stuck onto the actual cake towards the end. So my cake is ready and it's been covered in fondant so I'm sticking the glasses onto the cake. As you can see the black has rubbed off onto the white icing slightly but that gets covered up in the end. You can just clean that off with some water. So now I'm going to make Harry Potter's scarf. I've got two colours here. I've got a burgundy and a yellow. cutting a rectangle shape out of the burgundy coloured fondant. This piece is slightly longer than the burgundy. cutting a smaller rectangle out of these two pieces. Stuck the pieces together with some glue, alternating the colours. I've used my pizza wheel to cut off any excess 
just to make sure that the scarf looks nice and even on both sides. And then I use my knife to cut the tassels on either end of the scarf. And now I'm going to make a name plaque. I'm mixing some of the brown food colouring in with the white. But I'm not mixing the brown in too much because I want it to have a marbly effect. a rectangle shape it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to make the edges look a little bit uneven now this is where I use my fingers just to crumple around the edges so it doesn't have a perfect edge look more like a rough crumpled up piece of paper look used my tool just to um, break off some of the pieces and add some indents um, to it so that it looks like it's an old piece of paper. So now I'm going to leave it to dry for a few minutes. So I've placed the scarf onto the cake already and now I'm going to stick the hat on. as well as the golden snitch. To finish off the cake, I'm dusting around the edges and all over the cake with some brown dust.
So now that my plaque's dried enough, it should be easier to write on. So I'm using my edible black pen to do this. I'm using some darker brown just to highlight the cracks and the rips in the plaque just so that it has an old feel to it. Just sticking the plaque to the front of the cake.
dust and I've drawn in some footprints. And there we have our finished Harry Potter styled cake.